was a thing of the past. Now, when the darkness passes, that's that salvation. Spiritual blindness, satanic blindness, ignorance to truth is something of the past. Turn, if you would, in your Bible in Ephesians chapter 2 to get a little more understanding of this spiritual light dispelling darkness. And when you read a verse like this, you begin to understand why people need Christ. Why these that are angry and burning with flag and filled with hate need so much to have the light of the glorious gospel shine into their hearts. Ephesians 2 and verse 1 tells us, And you have he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Where in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. How many of you know that there are many today walking according to the prince and power of the air? They are children of disobedience. They are in the darkness. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That is the, the lifestyle of someone without Jesus Christ. Their past walk was in darkness, but their present walk is in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Did you see that in verse 8? It says, and the true light shine, now shineth, and the true light now shineth. It shines in us, and it prevails over the darkness. The light of the gospel brings light, life, and love, and it is something that shines in the heart of the believer. Right now, the light coexists with darkness. In other words, uh, there is still darkness in this world, and we as the light, uh, bearing the light of the gospel, are in a dark world. But the light and the divine love that Christ bears will increasingly dispel darkness, and especially at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be a dispelling of the darkness, and he will rule and reign, and he will rule in righteousness. Light always prevails over darkness, and ultimately, Jesus Christ as the light of this world will prevail over the darkness of this world. But there is light shining in the world right now, and how we thank God for it. Now turn, if you would, to 2 Corinthians 4, again, to see this new light. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. It says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and that's a reference to creation, but look at the next phrase, hath shined in where? Our hearts. Our hearts. See, that's the new light. When you got saved, he shined, he illuminated your heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We have been rescued from sin and darkness and have been transferred into Christ's glorious kingdom. It's not of ourselves, it's by the power of Christ alone. And there is a new light that is within us. And it is not the light of some a new age speech or some new age thinker. It is the light of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God says, I, I, I can tell you, I can give you assurance that you're walking in the right direction, that you are my children. And that is, if you are following this old commandment, which is now a new commandment, the commandment to love one another, that is an evidence of your salvation. And secondly, if the light is shining through you, that is an evidence of salvation. The scriptures say, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And believe you me, there are people during this COVID-19 and they're watching and they're seeing your car pull out on Sunday church time and they're seeing you being faithful to God. And your children are watching during a time like this and your, your, your co-workers are watching to see if you're going to cuss a little more get a bad attitude and what I'm telling you is that this time of 2020 is a great time to let your light shine for Jesus Christ Amen. we used to sing about that when I was a kid in Sunday school and I just feel like we need to sing it right here right now this little light of mine remember that get your light up would you if you know the song help me with it and Dr. Rasmus is doing good he's learned he's something that's with me in the past he's ready but let's sing it together even through that show this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it 
it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I won't let Satan blow it out. I won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, I think tonight about little Bill Weibel, 82 years old. His light was shining and God called him home. Faithful. So many people that I have pastored over the years, somewhere along the line, maybe age 40, 50, 60, not that they lost their salvation, but they lost their testimony. They covered up the light. Somehow, some way, they got crossways, they got discouraged. I'm not, I'm not sure always what, what happens. I just know that people that once were witnessing and living and worshiping and loving God, the light isn't shining like it once did. Oh, tonight that we would say, Lord, I want to live according to that commandment of loving others. I, I want that new light to shine through me. The light that you gave to me when you saved me. I want others to see that light. But I want you to see tonight not only an old commandment, not only a new light, but as we close, I want you to see a self-deception. Because there are people who can come to a place of trying to convince themselves that they're walking in the light, when in fact they really are not. Notice in verse 9 it says, He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in the darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Now again, this passage is to give assurance to a true believer. And the Bible is telling us here that if someone is claiming to be a believer, but they hate their brother, and they're not walking in the light, there is reason to question the essence of their faith. Or perhaps more personally stated, for us to question the essence of our own faith. There is a deception that is exposed here. It is exposed, first of all, in a false profession. Notice it says, he that saith he is in the light. Say it with me. He that, that saith he is in the light. Well, I'm saved. I'm in the light. I went to church. I went to Sunday school. He that saith he is in the light. If a person says he is in the light, but he is hating his brother, he has, he has animosity towards a brother in Christ, that is a danger signal. There should not be hatred. There could very well be a false profession. It is impossible for love and hate to exist in the heart of a believer when it comes to this matter of another believer. I remember years ago, I saw a Peanuts cartoon with Lucy saying to Charlie Brown, she said, I hate everything, I hate everybody, I hate the whole world. And Charlie Brown said, but I thought you had inner peace. Lucy said, I have inner peace, but I still have outer obnoxiousness. <laughs> have you ever met a Christian right now? <laughs> How are you doing? Fine. Are you saved? Yes. <laughs> They're saying they possess something, but you're not seeing it. God says, if you say that you're in the light, but you hate your brother, something's wrong. Deception is being exposed. Friend, if you truly say there's a desire in your heart to keep a right spirit towards your brothers and sisters in Christ. Deception is exposed. And deception sometimes is even refused. Notice in verse 10 it says, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. In other words, if you truly love your brother, then you're, you're refusing to go the route of deception. You truly are abiding in the light, and there's no occasion of stumbling. True love refuses hypocrisy and deception. True love 
has an open relationship with a brother in Christ. We don't, in other words, true love would say, hey brother, how you doing? The guy's like, sure. That's not true love. True love doesn't act one way to someone's face and then another way to live. That's a deceptive love. God demonstrated love on the cross, did he not? For God so loved the world that he what? Gave, he gave his so own mm -hmm. okay. Jesus displayed love. On the cross of Calvary, as they spat upon him, as they scourged and ultimately crucified him, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. How many Baptists are no longer in church because of bitterness? I didn't say Christians, I said Baptists. Because a true believer is someone who, by the grace of God, can continue love even after they've been hurt. They're not looking for their way out. They're looking for the way to stay in love with God and in love with God's people. I'm not minimizing hurts. I'm not saying that hurt shouldn't be dealt with or that difficult situations should not be counseled through or talked through or prayed through. But I'm saying God will make a way for two believers to find love and peace together. Sometimes I'll have a man come in, hasn't been lately, but in some kind of marriage counseling, I've had a few times where men have said, I just don't love my wife. I can't love her anymore. And I'll say, are you saved? Yes, I'm saved. Well, if you're saved, would you then believe that the Holy Spirit lives in you? Well, yes. Well, would you not then agree that the fruit of the Spirit is 